Hey, it's Steve Cardi. We're in the studio. We're here talking a little bit about cameras and lenses. I get asked a lot what I shoot with, so I figured here, let's talk about equipment, let's talk about gear, and let's talk about Canon, Hasselblad, and Apple iPhones, because that's the three main things that I shoot. So, first, Canon 7D, which is the camera that I do all my professional work with. It's my camera of choice. I've been shooting with the Canon 7D since uh, probably January of 2010. I've gone Canon EOS 650, Canon EOS 10D, then 20D, actually Canon Rebel, 20D, 40D, and now 7D. So uh, people ask me a little bit about crop sensor versus full frame sensor. This Canon 7D has a crop sensor. Now I've always shot with a crop sensor since the very, very beginning, meaning uh, when I went from 35 millimeter to digital, rather the Canon Rebel was the first camera that I shot with. And that camera was a crop sensor. So it's been since 2004 that I've shot a crop sensor. So that versus a full frame sensor, at 20 megapixels, I've never really noticed a difference. Yes, my lenses are a little bit closer than they would be with, say, the 5D Mark II or Mark IV, but for the most part, I actually appreciate that little bit of extra crop, and I don't know, I just have always been a crop sensor guy, so that's my vibe. So, um, really, it's all about glass. So, I wanna talk a little bit about glass before I get into the Hasselblad, I shoot pretty much with a 50 millimeter. Um, that's the lens that I shoot with primarily all the time. The 50 millimeter lens is my lens of choice. It's on my camera body probably, I would say 80% of the time. And the 50 1.4 is the one that I choose. There's also a 1.8 and a 1.2. So if you imagine no lens on the camera right here, this is f1. So this is 1.4. Now I'm losing one over 1.4. That's the light loss. So one over one would be no light loss. One over 1.4 is the amount of light loss that I'm losing with this. Now when you go to the 50 millimeter 1.8, the biggest issue with that lens is build quality. Now it's plastic. It has a plastic mount. It's not very sharp at far distances, like uh, if you're trying to shoot something full length, you're shooting something from across the street, you're shooting landscape. When you zoom in to 100%, I've always found that there's issues with the focus. So I've opted for the 1.4, which has a steel mount, which you can see, and the build quality is amazing, and it's tack sharp. So the next step up is the 50 millimeter 1.2. Now, we're talking about thirds of stops. The difference between the price of a Canon 50mm 1.8 and the 50mm 1.2, the 1.8 is, call it, uh, 130 bucks. The 1.4, we'll call it, 100, uh, no, 450 bucks. And the 1.2 is around 1,600 bucks. So you're paying nearly $1,200 for a third of a stop unless you are really doing a lot of low light work, maybe wedding photographers, I know they do quite a bit of low light work, that would be when that third of a stop makes a huge difference. But for me, I have the 1.4 and I opt to just bump the uh, shutter speed down a little bit, bump the aperture open, and if I can't do that, I bump the ISO up a third. So it's not worth it to me to go another thousand, twelve hundred bucks to get the 1.2. But it's an L-series, and L-series are by far the top of the line when it comes to Canon. So that's the 50 millimeter. This is an 85. Now, um, I have the 85 millimeter 1.8. There's also a 1.2, and it's the same thing as far as price. This lens is in around the $700 range, the 85 1.8, and 
the 1.2 is in the $2,400 range. Um, we call that Ocho Cinco. We rent that from time to time just because the depth of field on that lens is beautiful. And um, just going into a little bit on depth of field, I shoot only prime lenses. So people think, well, what's the difference between shooting uh, a 70 to 210 and dialing it in at 85 and shooting like that. Well, zoom lenses, just by the nature of them, first of all, are softer. Um, this has roughly five pieces of glass, where a zoom lens has up to 11 or 12 pieces of glass. The amount of money that you have to spend for what's called a floating aperture, which is, say, a 70 to 210 2.8, is quite a lot of money, where most of the time the kit lenses that you get are. Uh, 18 to 55, 3.5 to 4.5, which is a floating aperture, meaning at 3.5, it's uh, at 18 millimeters, it's 3.5, and at uh, 55, you have 5.6. So that lens is slow, build quality bad. Prime lenses just give you the true depth of field. So if I shoot this 1.8 wide open, the background just liquefies. So it's super sharp and also my lens of choice when it comes to shooting tighter portraits or shooting beauty. Fashion and beauty with this lens is uh, fantastic. The, back, the background, if you wish, really liquefies and it's my lens of choice when it comes to shooting portraits tight up or uh, tight beauty. That's the 85 millimeter, 1.8. Now, um, back to cameras, again, those two lenses, um, the 50 and the 85, are pretty much on my camera all the time. It's one or the other. Now, if I have to go wide, um, my lens of choice is the 24 millimeter L-Series 1.4. This is a pricey, oh, pricey piece of glass, and uh, it's 1.4, meaning it's this, as bright as my 50, only it's a 20 millimeter. So it's very wide, um, it's fixed, great for event coverage if you're indoors, great for shooting fashion outside if you want to shoot horizontal scapes and have your model in there, great for landscapes. For me, my use for this lens is shooting fashion indoors. Um, I also use this lens when I'm doing a double page spread sometimes, when it doesn't work with the 50. And um, again, doesn't, this lens gets used maybe 5% of the time, where most of the other time, I have my 50 or my 85 on the camera. So 20 millimeter 1.4 L series. So um, let's talk about my Hasselblad. This is the camera that was in my hands or in front of me pointing at Pharrell, Radiohead, um, Tony Bennett. Uh, my God, the list goes on and on and on and on. This was the camera of choice, uh, let's say from 1991 when I bought it. This is a uh, 50th anniversary Hasselblad. So I got it in 1991. Um, Victor Hasselblad invented the company in 19, whew, 1941. And uh, I was lucky enough to get this camera when I was in second year at uh, in photography school. And this camera went on to, well, not really the camera, actually, me holding the camera, went on to uh, be my main workhorse for the better part of 12 years. So. This was the camera that I shot up until I changed completely over to digital. And when I'm shooting film, it's this camera that I shoot with. It's not 35 millimeter. Although I still do have a 35 millimeter camera, the Hasselblad, if I'm shooting film, there's just a, a very distinctive sound. just the sound that this Hasselblad makes that, uh, I don't know, it makes me smile. Anyways, this is a Hasselblad. When I shoot film, I shoot this. This is old school. This is a waist level finder. You pop this up, you look through, you focus. It's reverse left to right. Um, it's a Carl Zeiss 80 millimeter lens. This 80 with medium format is the equivalent of a 50 millimeter with a 35 millimeter or digital. So 80 which is the normal lens, and this Hasselblad was my setup for 20 years. If I needed to do anything wide, I'd rent a lens. If I needed to do anything short or telephoto, I'd rent a lens. But this setup um, I've had since 1991, so 20 years old.
pretty exciting. Anyways, my Hasselblad. So the last thing that I want to talk about is, uh, funny enough, the camera that I shoot with the most. Because I say the most because I shoot with it every day. And um, that's here. That's my iPhone 4. I shoot with my iPhone every day. And uh, the iPhone 4 camera is 5 megapixels. It shoots HD video. Uh, I have tons of apps. Um, I have a photography category where um, I have Camera Plus, which is my preferred app. I use it almost every day. Um, I have Instagram, um, Flickr. Uh, we have a Tumblr account for Herman and Audrey, so I flick my pictures to the Herman and Audrey account. And I have three ongoing series that I do can, uh, pretty much exclusively with my iPhone. One of them is Your City Right Now, which people follow on uh, Twitter and on Flickr. Anyways, that is my gear set. That's pretty much what I use. This is Steve Cardi. You have been in the studio. Thanks so much for watching. Again, you can always see my work online at stevecardi.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Steve Cardi. I'm represented by a fantastic agency called Herman and Audrey. You can find our website, Herman and Audrey, actually hermanaudrey.com. And uh, you can see us at Herman Audrey on Twitter. Thanks for watching. This has been Cardi in the studio. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.